There's a small, beautiful island in the northern Pacific known as Taiwan. It has abundant marine and forest ecologies and rivers teeming with life. And one of the best ways to explore the beauty of Taiwan is through its water. Water is an essential element for life. In fact, about 60 to 70% of the human body is made up of water, and about 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Rivers are an important part of the Earth's water cycle. They're sort of like blood vessels working to circulate and filter the water so that we have a clean environment in which to live. Taiwan is a long, narrow island. It has more than 150 rivers, totaling more than 40,000 kilometers. The mountainous terrain means that rivers are often short with big drop-offs and lots of rapids and waterfalls. Once a river is polluted, it often flows into the ocean before the impurities can be filtered out. When it comes to water scarcity and river pollution, Taiwan deals with the same problems as the rest of the world. But it's facing those problems head on, with the government and the private sector joining forces to come up with solutions. In 1976, Taiwan passed the Wastewater Pollution Control Law. Then in 2013, a serious case of industrial wastewater pollution occurred along the Hojin River in southern Taiwan. That, along with a string of other major cases, led to big changes to the law. In 2015, Taiwan amended the law in a bid to crack down on the deliberate discharge of wastewater, resulting in the serious pollution of rivers and water resources. They increased the maximum fine from about 20,000 US dollars to nearly 700,000 US dollars, targeting serious violators and going after illegal gains. In 1998, Taiwan set fees for wastewater and sewage discharge. In order to speed up the process and reduce the impact on industry, they amended the law to specify who it covered and how the fees would be collected. That helped reduce pollution by hitting polluters where it counts in their pocket. A certain percentage of all of the fees and fines collected is put into a fund for preventing water pollution. It's used for things like inspecting and improving water sources and bodies of water, building public sewers and sewage interceptors, and conducting R&D in the area of prevention technology. In order to encourage people to report polluters, Taiwan set up a system for whistleblowers, offering rewards for confirmed violations. The public can also access a variety of information online, including water discharge permits, declarations, investigation results and fines, and plans for resuming suspended construction. That's all because the public has the right to know. Taiwan is constantly revising its water pollution laws in line with local needs and international trends. The ultimate goal is the sustainable development of water resources in order to ensure that there's clean water for Taiwan and its people. Cities produce an incredible amount of sewage every day. That sewage contains grease, detergent, and organic matter. And if you dump it directly into rivers without processing it first, it will hurt the quality of the water, make it smell, and even cause eutrophication. Fortunately, Taiwan has a very clever solution for dealing with sewage. Taiwan is one of the most densely crowded places in the world. More than 23 million people live in an area less than 40,000 square kilometers in size. Each person generates an average of about 200 liters of sewage a day, including about 40 grams of biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD, one of the three largest sources of pollution for Taiwan's rivers. If you want to know about quality of life in a city, just look at how they deal with sewage. In Taiwan, they're proactively building sewer systems, and for places that don't yet have sewers, they're creating on-site treatment facilities to deal with the sewage right at the source and prevent it from flowing into rivers. 
On-site treatment takes place at the confluence of tributaries. It involves man-made wetlands, gravel contact, aeration facilities, and other forms of purification. The sewage interacts with oxygen, soil, microorganisms, and plants. This not only protects rivers, the water can also be reused as secondary water. It can help increase the volume of the river and maintain its ecological health. Sewage accounts for 50% of the pollution in Taiwan's urban rivers. But if rivers are the soul of a city, then we have to think about more than just wastewater treatment. We also have to build closer relationships between rivers, people, and their urban environment. Liuchuan flows right through one of the most densely populated parts of Taichung City. For years, no one would come near it because it was polluted with sewage from the surrounding community. In 2010, the EPA teamed up with the Taichung City government to deal with Liuchuan's pollution problems. They set up a water filtration plant upstream, utilizing a gravel contact oxidation process to improve water quality. They widened the riverbed and used Low Impact Development, or LID, to protect the banks, replacing the concrete with plants and a rainwater garden. Ti 河川或者是我们把它急流在我们的雨水铺满 Once Liuchuan was cleaned up and transformed into the beautiful river you see today, the birds returned, and so did the people. When it comes to urban rivers, Taiwan has succeeded in reducing the sources of pollution, while at the same time creating spaces like these where citizens can interact on the riversides. In effect, rivers have become a driving force in urban transformation. Livestock is an important part of Taiwan's agricultural economy. But if the wastewater and manure from farms gets into rivers, we're talking about serious pollutants like BOD, ammonia nitrogen, and SS. Instead of choosing between the agricultural economy and the environment, Taiwan has found a way to have both. Verdant fields and trees full of fruit, you'd never imagine that the magic fertilizer is manure produced by livestock. the livestock industry has long been adding copper and zinc to the feed in order to encourage growth. So if there's heavy metal residue in the manure, will it contaminate the fields? Well, Taiwan's government anticipated this exact problem. In order to prevent livestock manure from contaminating farmland, Taiwan's government has set up special monitoring procedures. 
Before applying to irrigate the fields, farms test for heavy metals in the manure and background concentrations in the soil. Then, after irrigation, they test the heavy metal levels in the soil and the ammonia nitrogen content in the groundwater. This comprehensive monitoring system has facilitated the use of livestock wastewater in farming. It should come as no surprise that technology-driven Taiwan also has some digital solutions. The government created this matchmaking website to bring together people from the livestock industry who can provide manure with farmers looking to fertilize their fields. Ever since Taiwan began promoting the use of livestock wastewater in 2016, more than a thousand operators have received approval, and that's led to a remarkable improvement in water quality. Rivers that were once polluted are now free of their former stench. What was once considered pollution is now enriching Taiwan's farmlands. This solution is not only helping protect the nation's water resources, it's bringing about industrial transformation. Now, the EPA is promoting the concept of farm to fork, which is great for production, the environment, and quality of life. If you want to reduce agricultural pollution at the source, then reasonable fertilization is key. The EPA has promoted the use of biological agents as a green method for reducing eutrophic pollution caused by chemical pesticides, fertilizers, and antibiotics. It helps farmers save money and increase production while reducing water pollution, creating an agricultural sector that's greener and healthier for all. There are a lot of industrial parks just like this one all over Taiwan. They helped fuel Taiwan's economic miracle, but they also polluted the nation's rivers. These days, they have an excellent strategy for dealing with that very problem. Industrial wastewater is far more difficult to deal with than domestic sewage and livestock wastewater because it's more complex, more concentrated, and there's a greater volume. Many years ago, Taiwan began to examine its rivers, assessing the level of pollution in different areas and managing discharge in order to ensure that the heavy metal levels are safe for human health. Irrigation accounts for about 70% of Taiwan's total water consumption, and about 50% of the water used in irrigation comes from rivers and regional drainage. Taiwan's government has created policies that prevent industrial wastewater from entering irrigation channels, and that's helped ensure water quality. Taiwan also understands the importance of risk management, so it's mandatory for businesses producing a certain amount of pollution to install a water quality monitoring system at the point of discharge. Among other indicators, it measures the amount of wastewater, water temperature, pH balance, chemical oxygen demand, and heavy metals. It gives the government advanced warning so that it can respond if necessary. Right now, water quality monitoring systems keep track of more than 80% of the total industrial wastewater in Taiwan, and as much as 99% of the wastewater discharged by industrial parks. The government uploads the data onto the internet in real time to allow for citizen oversight. The government has also set up a Water Pollution Source Geographic Information System, which shows pollution sources, transmission channels, and water quality receptors in the environment. After calculation and analysis, the water quality data is presented visually. And of course, all of this data is open and transparent. Most people, myself included, would like to live in a place with zero waste water discharge. But is that really possible? Well, Taiwan has found a way. In fact, some companies save about 7 million U.S. dollars a year by recycling wastewater. Xiaoli River runs through Taoyuan and Xinzhu in northern Taiwan. In 2000, a new factory upstream began discharging 30,000 tons of wastewater every day, polluting the river. Thanks to the efforts of the government and environmental groups, the company decided to recycle all of its wastewater, effectively shutting off their pipes and turning a crisis into an opportunity. Not only has it saved a lot of money in wastewater treatment, it also produces copper that is used to make more than 100 tons of copper pipes every year. That, in turn, generates more than 340,000 U.S. dollars in annual revenue for the company.
Protecting water resources is not just the job of the government. Civic participation in Taiwan is also very high. In 2000, after an illegal dumping incident at Xishan River in Kaohsiung, the local residents formed the nation's first water environment patrol. Today, there are more than 400 such patrols across Taiwan with more than 12,000 members. Now 谢谢. Citizens play an important role in preventing water pollution. Taiwan is not only implementing projects to improve rivers and prevent pollution, they've also set up a hotline to enable citizens to report polluters. The authorities will work with you to collect evidence and then fix the problem. And it's proving to be a major deterrent to polluters. Civilian water patrols are helping make up for a shortage in government staff. The government has set up water environment protection centers in north, central, and southern Taiwan to coordinate efforts and make river pollution inspections even more effective. Is the water you drink safe? Every day, more than a billion people around the world have nothing but contaminated water to drink. In fact, more than three million children die every year because they don't have water that's clean. The main goal of the EPA is to ensure that the people of Taiwan have water that's safe for everyday use and for drinking. The EPA has revised the drinking water management regulations several times since 1997 in order to ensure the quality of drinking water from the source all the way to the tap. Of course, along with regulations, you also need specific practices. Taiwan has taken a multi-pronged approach to protecting the surface water environment and conserving groundwater resources. That includes creating water quality protection zones around drinking water sources, setting up water quality monitoring stations, and taking monthly samples to test water quality. In 2000, the EPA set up the Drinking Water Management Information System and the Drinking Water Global Information website in order to share information that can help manage drinking water quality. They not only provide valuable information for environmental protection authorities, they also allow the public to access information about regulations, water quality statistics, and water source protection zones. The impending water crisis is more urgent than ever before. With the advance of global warming, we're seeing fewer and fewer clean water sources. Taiwan has done everything from creating regulations and using technology to decreasing wastewater and teaming up with the public in order to create a new water environment for everyone. <laughs>